We are back and we are here to talk about our own personal stories we've had with Tango teachers over the years. And uh, for both of us, we've taken a lot of private lessons, group lessons, and we've had many different encounters with teachers in the Tango world. And perhaps some of you watching have had some interactions with the same teachers. So we will share ours and perhaps um, maybe it'll resonate with your own personal experience. I think what sticks out to me is uh, my very first private lesson was with Virginia Pandolfi and Maximiliano Cristiani. And I, rem I still remember this. I was about a year into tango and me and Rochelle, we danced. And I still remember it like it was yesterday. Virginia's like, what? why do you dance everything like it's milonga? <laughs> she was like, why do you cut everything? You, everything you do, you cut, 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 cut. And I just was like horrified from that. So I was like, oh, interesting. Like, yeah, you run, you're like running all over the place. Like, what are you like? This is tango. And uh, Maxi was really, uh, he was really patient. And he was just telling me like, he was trying to teach me these, this sequence that he did. And I, I'm really bad at learning sequences and figures, especially on the spot, like a private. And he, he shows me and I'm like, I don't, and I'm like not doing it. And he's like, it's so easy. I'm like, I'm only a year in. He's like, a year is plenty of time. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, okay, this is interesting. So it was a good challenge. And I looked at myself like, wow, okay. I have a, a long way to go, even though I've done a year. Cause a year sounds long, right? If you yeah. do something for a year, it sounds kind of long. Yeah, and now that we're like 12 years in, we're just like, yeah, we're babies still. <laughs> we're, we're, still we're freaking babies. Tango baby. <laughs> maybe, maybe like a little more than a baby, like toddlers now. <laughs> yeah, out of the diapers only. <laughs> <laughs> man, actually, one of my favorite stories, uh, man, I, so uh, I got to give it to Kijero Makana because he totally saved my butt as a beginner. But he actually, uh, he taught me how to kamaseo. What? Yeah, yeah, he taught me how to kamaseo. He taught the whole class. So, he's, so he goes out there, because you know Makata, he's like a fucking wise guy. So he's like, all right, picture, you're on the open ocean, <laughs> right? And then you see all these boats over there. What? All these boats. <laughs> but you're a pirate. <laughs> you look at them. You look at the boats, and you want to kill them. But you do it with a smile. <laughs> and like I like everyone's cracking up. I loved it. And like, but like it gave me such an I like because I'm a very um I, I am very uh, image based person. You know, like I yeah. I not not necessarily metaphorical, but I need to understand certain things. Um, I can totally see him doing know, that. Yeah, uh, like I, I need to, I need like a very cinematic version of something so I could like maybe take a, like ten percent of it. You know, and that was great because like after that. It's like, you know, I got my magnum, blue steel, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I got it after that. I mean, I wasn't a pirate, but I mean, I, I, at least I had an idea of how intense it has to be so people actually see it. Because before that, I was like, you know, and it wasn't enough. Um, and then later, you're like, Robert, you're so obvious. I'm like, yeah, because I want them to see it, <laughs> you know, with a smile. <laughs> you know? So, uh, you know, that was, that, was, that was definitely one of my favorite uh, learning lessons. So got to give it to Gujarat Makana if you ever had a chance to take a lesson with them. Great guy and I definitely do recommend it. I think one of my first less private lessons with Brian and Juliana, uh, we were in their back studio. It was and me and Rochelle, we had like, we had taken another private with them before and we were going to show them like, all right, we learned the last time, <laughs> uh -oh. you know? Here we go. So they played a song and then like we went out and we're like, we just, you know, we warmed up and then um, they're like, yeah, dance. And so we danced the whole song. I'm trying to like do everything that Brian told me, like here, this 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 way to do the sidestep, like do this with the cross. And like, I'm doing all this. I'm like trying to show like everything I got, like everything I got. And after the song ends, I'm like, yes, like we nailed it. Like in my mind, I'm like, we nailed it, right? <laughs> and then Brian goes, uh, so when are you gonna start dancing tango? <laughs> I will never forget that. Not you. <laughs> He's like, when are you gonna start dancing? And I'm like, we just dance. What are you talking about? <laughs> He's like, no, that was not tango. <laughs> you know, I did the same thing with uh, 
Leandro, um, oh man, what's his last name? So it's Lila, Lila Rizek, Leandro, what's his last name? Uh, Oliver. Oliver, thank you. Oh yeah. my God, I can't believe I forgot that. <laughs> sorry, Leandro. <laughs> I'm very sorry. I got your back. I have some good stuff with him too. <laughs> so like, I did the same thing with Leandro. I was like, yeah, so I was like, oh, I gotta do this. I'm gonna do the Ruski, I'm gonna do the Lapis, Ruski, all that stuff. Uh, after everything, he's like, Robert. So, when you go to Thanksgiving, you know, you, know, you, uh, you get your plate, you put on your turkey, put on your mashed potatoes, then you, uh, Put on the jello on top of the turkey. Take the ice cream. Put it on top of that. And I'm like, he's like, I'm like, what? He's like, you know how gross that is. Like all that stuff. It's too much. That's what you're doing. You're dancing like that. You're just like you're this Thanksgiving plate with everything. You know, like you, I, I just want you know, turkey and mashed potatoes. But not the ice cream on top. Not the you know, that's not the crackers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get up, no, no. But like, well, that was a uh, that was this thing. Like I was like like, but you know what? It, even though like, he told me that and I got that image and I appreciate what he was trying to tell me, it took me years. To <laughs> get, I'm not kidding. It took me years. You know, like, That's tango, man. Because like, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. And I slept for two weeks. And after that, I'm like, <laughs> Tasmanian devil, you know? So it's, it's um, yeah, you know, it, it's devil's in the detail and you know, you got to calm your nerves and just, just kind of settle down. Yeah, it took me another three, four years until I finally like put that lesson to work <laughs> that's funny because he told me the direct opposite <laughs> really yeah we're at caltech and he had he's already seen me dance before and he, and um he, he liked it he was like daddy you do everything the same all you i see you dance several songs and all you do the same figures you do the same sequence maximize your dance do something different. Do it a different way. Why do you do every single thing the same? And I was just like, wow. <laughs> like, I have to really think about that. Like, I was like, wow. Like, I guess, like, yeah. There's like, there's so many more. Like, there's so much. There's so many more things out there. And I'm not even trying to explore it because I've been trying to just do the things that I know mm. precisely. Right. Yeah, yeah. And he's just like enough with that like now okay, like go beyond that venture out try different things live on the edge <laughs> yeah live on the edge maximize i still remember that <laughs> singing oh, into my man. head but yeah shout out to leandro and that was uh, i still yeah. remember those those words yeah um for me you know i was on the same lines but a little different and what it was is uh fernando and uh karina mm. so i was like taking lessons from them and i was really just trying to keep it simple this is when i actually finally took the angels lessons to heart and mm -hmm. trying to keep it simple you know really be clean everything mm -hmm. and then they stop and they're like you are a slave to the figures <laughs> <laughs> like break the chain break the chains you know and i'm like what I'm like you know you always do a tickle clothes everything you do is like dot 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 tickle clothes <laughs> like you are a slave to the figure so uh, yeah, it was, it was it, that was tough because you know I I, I still do that like, too. Which Fernando? Uh, for, uh, 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 that's it for now. Uh, Karina and uh, Octavio. Octavio. Sorry, Octavio. I was like Fernando and Karina. No, so Octavio. Octavio. Sorry, but yeah, they were both told me I'm a slave to my figure, and I was just like because um, wherever it was, I take because wherever the um, the phrase ended, I'd always do the you know four right together, mm -hmm. and they just drove them insane because. You know, it, it broke everything up with that same thing. And, you know, it took me a while. You know, I, I would say I, I still fall to that sometimes, but I, I've been doing it. Uh, yeah, I've been, I haven't been closing as often, but I, I still find myself, you know, stuck with that figure. It's, it's so much in my muscle memory that it's hard to shake. Mm. But yeah, you know, four years later, I, I'm still, you know, working on that. <laughs> Interesting. I remember when I first, there's, so I had, several idols that when I was first starting tango, um, my tango idols were Javier Rodriguez, Sebastian Acheval, Gabriel Misse, um, and, um, Oh, Misse. <laughs> yes, I know. Oh, that's a character. <laughs> and Sebastian Arce. Yeah. Those were my, my top four tango or idols. Mm -hmm. And I remember the first time I met Gabriel Misse, it was in San Francisco. I took a workshop and I remembered his lectures just like, 
Tango is pain. You want to? Why are you smiling? Tango is not fun. You should be. <laughs> Tango is uh is sadness. It is pain. You should be like you. This is hard work. You think this is easy? It should be tough. It's a struggle. Tango is a struggle. And I just remember like, I just remember just the, the hearing him the, the way of him describing just how much effort and how much like seriousness he puts into Tango and just like I, I remember his you know lines on the floor and we had to follow them and his drills and just like how precise he was and um I just <laughs> I just was like wow I was, that was the first time where I had an instructor like give like a rant for like like 20 minutes just like that's is that what you do this if you want fun this is not get get out of my class yeah. this, De this, this, <laughs> this, this is not fun this is pain you know and so i was like wow tango can be very <laughs> this intense. is very intense you know like okay yeah admittedly i, I drank the mise kool-aid yeah like there's a time like I, I definitely was high in the kool-aid and to the point where i, I loved them I, I really did uh, adore mise and the Unique, one, one of a kind. Yeah, he is. Yeah. But the one thing I really loved about him was, oh man, he's talking about Milan Gero style. Oh. <laughs> he's like, Milan Gero style is not dance all close like this, da da da. And then you just, it's the time that ends, and you just let her go. No, no, Milan Gero, Milan Gero style is for life, for life. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you go home, and you're, you, you are still Milan Gero style. You know, before you go to the Milonga, you iron your shirt like Milonga style. You know, and then I made a post about like ironing my shirt and everything. And then here's like Sarah, like, oh, you drink the fucking Kool Aid. <laughs> you know, but no, but you know, but like there was a time. I mean, it was. Um, I loved it because it really, uh, it really gave me a perspective of tango isn't just a dance; it's a culture. Sure. You know, and it's a culture that starts. You know, it's it it might you know it might start in your life through the belong and through the classes, but it ends up spreading throughout your whole life and everything you end up doing is tango. Not just talking about tango, but like the way you act, the way you move, the way you like even order food. There is a there is an essence of Argentina that kind of sticks with you, and that's one thing I really appreciate about Mise is that it's the um, it's how he brings back the history and instills culture into you. And then he wants you to be worthy of the culture. Right. You know, um, you know, like there are a lot of teachers like, oh, I'm gonna teach you this step, teach you this step. But me say, I, he, he's a guy, even if you don't care for him, you need to take a class with him just, just to understand, like just a little slice of the history of Argentine tango. You know, when you were talking about the culture, it kind of reminds me of that Fabian Peralta class. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Fabian. Sorry, Fabian. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that was, I just, it's, that's imprinted in my mind. It is. That is just so imprinted. You know, I, I, I talked to Fabian about that, and, you know, he, he, was, he was embarrassed about it afterwards. I but, loved it. But, but the Honestly, thing is, I loved it. But, you know, he, he was standing for his culture. Like, this guy just came in, and I was like, when are you going to show us some steps? Yeah, so for for those of you who weren't there, Fabian came to Los Angeles. He was teaching a, gr a group class. I think it was before the Malanga. It was a pre-Malanga pre yeah. class. And he had, was spending time um, dissecting one tango song. And he was uh, going over the lyrics and talking about how when you dance this song, you should understand the lyrics because it will help you transmit the emotion behind the song. And it, I loved the lecture. I loved the way... Like, my favorite classes are when we're sitting down and chatting. Like, honestly, those are, like, some of the more impactful yeah. classes that I've had. And he was just, the way he was trying to capture the essence of this tango song and the beauty behind it. And this one older gentleman in the back is like, I want my money back. We've been sitting here for 20 minutes. I mean, not done anything. We haven't even moved our body. Yeah. No. And Fabian got pissed. He was like, it's like, if you don't like it, get the fuck out of here. It's the future. It's the future. <laughs> no, um, I'm sorry, Fabian. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, but to Fabian's credit, he started the class with, do you guys mind to let's try something different? Yeah. And everyone agreed. And that's the thing. It's like we all agreed and we all sat there knowing that it's going to be something different. It wasn't a, here's a figure, ingest and buy. I yeah. loved it. I mean, I think I think Brian was there too, and he nodded. He's like, "This, this is it." I was yeah. like, "Yes, this is it." Yeah, I, I agree. But like, also at the same time, I also understand the other person's point of view, because uh, I think it's, you know, it's very normal 
uh, especially in the beginning stages, to be a consumer of tango. Mm -hmm. Like, because you're not part of the culture, you're just a consumer. Right. Like, I, I'm here, I'm here to buy a figure. I'm here, I'm here to buy something. Yeah. You know, feed me. I'm paying you to feed me. Right. Uh, and I think that's that's something I'd like to talk about later down the line, like culture, the tango culture and tango dance and, <clears throat> and how we approach it. But uh, for now, oh my God, that is... <laughs> I'm sorry, Fabian. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was great. That it was, was it was great, great but great. Uh, but like yeah, but uh, that outburst was was something. We would like to know actually from you all in the in the comments what were some great experiences that you've had over the years with some um, tango professionals that had you encountered, and yeah, we would love to see what you all have to say. Yep, and don't forget to click that like and subscribe button to keep up to date with left foot, right foot. Tomas and Jimena. There, uh, he he's Tomas is such a suave guy, like <laughs> he's one of those guys who just you know when he talks he he he's just like so like so suave and even with this like back then it was broken English you know yeah so but it was all because he was talking about you know the whole aspect of lead and follow yeah. right and the idea that you don't go at the same time and it's like so he would just go it's like. You know, it's like invitation. You know, you say, "Lady, come this way, come this way," <laughs> and it was amazing because, like, you know, he he's talking about like opening up, and so that she could actually pass through because you know it's very easy for a lot of guys. It's like, hey, you come, come with me, come right? here, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. sidestep, yeah. burp, you know. Yeah. But he talked a lot about like opening up and uh, inviting a person to actually and making space for the invitation so the lady takes her, her step. So. But like you know, he's got that suave, like he's very. <laughs> you know, he's I, very jovial though. He's very joke. Uh, to me, he's he jokes around. He, I, I don't know. I guess I've seen different sides of him. Yeah, I, I guess this is this, this is the very beginning. Ah, uh, your first impression. You no, know, when he first when he first came out, he has, yeah. he wasn't living here yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. I remember. You know, that. he's like you know you know ladies, it's like these you know <laughs> so uh, you know. I, I I'd say that accent, man. It, you gotta love that accent. It, it's it's very sexy. To me, suave was uh, Claudio Vajagra. To me, oh, that is suave. the Godfather. Yes, that that is like I come into the room. He's like, yeah. How long you been dancing tango? And I was like, mm. he's like, I've been dancing tango longer than you've been alive. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, okay, <laughs> okay, now. <laughs> That is suave. He comes in and then I just love it. He's just so, even his dance just represents his persona. Like mm. just, he's suave, his dance is suave. And so it's just, his improvisation is just pure. Just, it's just so, ah. Yeah. It, it just, yeah. You know, for me, suave is Jorge Torres. Jorge Torres is up there too. You know. Relax. Just, yeah. Just relax. It's like, breathe. <laughs> 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 well, the way he says it too, he's like, look. I will show you how to dance, but you have to breathe. You have to move with me. <laughs> move with me. You know, I mean... Tai Chi master. I know. Well, he, he did Aikido, you know? He did Aikido, and he, he uses a lot of his... Uh, his teaching his learn what he learned in Aikido in this tango too but, I remember yeah. I asked him like there was this point in the movement where he sends the follower out and away and it was part of the hero and at the time I I just with my mind blown I was like wait how did you how did you make her go back into the right and you didn't even do anything and he like he did it again and he just blew air he was like and he should <laughs> the magic <laughs> like I was like oh wow if I could if I could only do what he could do with one finger you know? <laughs> oh my god yeah. oh man uh, nice. the characters and then of course uh, I guess the first time I met another tango idol which was uh, Sebastian Acheval mm. and Roxana Suarez um, I love those two to death I remember the first time I met them I think it was kind of clear that, like, watching me, even though I wasn't trying to copy his aesthetic, you could probably, like, see the influence there a little bit. And so it was really interesting meeting them for the first time. I took all of their workshops. I think they were teaching at Nora's. And I think at the time, it was so cool. I felt like Nora's Tango Week uh, was the best place to learn, like, at a festival. Because it was, like, a week long, and you can just really take 
workshop after workshop after workshop. And there were so many instructors and the classes weren't super full. So sometimes I'm in there and there's only like six or seven other couples. And it's almost like a mini group private with them. Yeah. And I learned like, wow, I was just, I got to lead Roxana, I got to lead Sebastian. And just seeing just, uh, just how, just seeing the, the essence of how they moved in person after seeing all of their, you know, dancing online was just really an awe mm. moment for me. Nice. For me, like, uh, you know, my idol, the great Julio. Yeah, Balmaceta. Balmaceta, man. So, I The funny thing is when I, we saw him dance live, the first thing I thought is like, wow. That's like you, if you were like super pro. <laughs> I'm serious, like same body type, like same way of movement. Yeah, but I, I love the guy to death. I mean, bless his soul, really rest in peace. But I remember he was trying to get me to transfer my weight totally. So first he was like, you know, have you ever like crossed the stream, right? And you know there's rocks on there. Yes. And you want to go from rocks to rocks. You don't want to get wet. You have to commit. <laughs> You have to get onto your toe, onto your toe. And you know, sometimes I would get there, like because uh, we were learning like uh, it, like just a basic hero, you know, mm -hmm. like this step, and I have to get on my toe to actually do the hero. Mm -hmm. And then, but you know, back then I was, all, I, I always loved spinning, on, like turning on my heel, you know. Yeah, I know, I remember uh, that. Because <laughs> you're so adamant. I was like, ah, I can do it on my heel. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I remember he, he would just go, so sometimes he's like, yes, yes. And then sometimes he's like, no, no, on the, your toe. <laughs> And like Virginia would just like would be like push them back like it's okay. <laughs> oh man, but but yeah, Julio was such a great character. I I I miss him dearly, man. I really do miss him. Yeah, I had some good moments with him. I remember there was this one figure he did, and I just remember it was so genius to me because I was like, how does he make room for this? Like I think he was doing some kind of cicada. And my, the, just the angle that I was taking was just so off. He was like, yeah, cause it just felt like I had to take this straight line and he was like, just cutting in the, in this weird, this, this way that I was like, oh, that makes perfect sense. I just the embrace and then move that way. And I was like, you know, just, it, just the way he thought about tango and the way he just kind of inside and out looked at it, just was very inspiring. Mm. You know what? The one thing that I remember that was really big was uh, the vaults figure that uh, Claude Vijagra taught us. Oh. Because, you know, it was like the, the, the fall of Scott's the lead and we like, go back and forth. Yeah. And we always thought it was circular. Yeah. He's like, nah, it's a triangle. <laughs> you take two steps and then you turn. <laughs> like, I was like, what? The? Really? <laughs> it was one of those moments where like, oh my God, the magic trick got me. Mm. So, yeah. I, th I think another one of the uh, maestros was Carlos and Rosa Perez. I was lucky early enough, they actually came and traveled to California mm. and they came to the studio I was teaching at, which was Oxygen Tango. And they, I still remember his his words today. It was De Sar Carlos De Sarli, I forget what song it was, but he looked at me and I must have made only like a few steps of like a sequence. And he was like, do you hear this? This is the Sarli. You did like a thousand moves in the Sarli. And I was like, whoa, what are you talking about? You don't dance that much on the Sarli. Simple, slow, elegant. And I still remember that to this day, just like, oh, wow. Like just thinking about how different orchestras make you move a certain way, mm -hmm. right? And to showing respect to the person who made the music and yeah. the intention behind it. It's really interesting. Nice. <laughs> that actually reminds me of, uh, oh my God. But I'm, I'm actually glad it wasn't me who made this mistake, but it was, uh, I was in a class with, um, I don't remember if it's uh, Susanna Miller or Alicia Pons, or it was one of them. I think it was Alicia Pons. I'm pretty sure it's Alicia Pons. And what happened was we were, um, we were you know, it was, it, was a, it was a workshop. It was just two, it ended up just being two couples. Yeah. And so it was me and Colleen and um, I, I don't I don't remember who the other two were, mm -hmm. and she she went. So what? How do you feel when you hear this song? And you know back then, you know the girls were just like, oh, nice lead. It's like I feel happy. I feel happiness. I feel joy. Yeah. And she's like, <laughs> you know, it's like no, this is a sad song. It's a sad. You should be feeling depressed and like you know. Oh man, it was like and but the. But like, here's the thing though, it's like, if you don't know Spanish, 
how do you know it's a sad song? Because a lot of these songs sound very romantic, even though they're sad and depressing. Like, <laughs> like, like Resien, Yeah. You know, it, it's a very, it's a very sad, depressing song about this guy returning back. You know, mm -hmm. uh, he he doesn't know how to face the, this return back to like either his some woman of some sort. You know. Yeah. Um, but like, if you listen, like, if you if you read the lyrics, it's very sad and depressing because it's like his grief of of the, he doesn't know how to come back. But then. You listen to the, the 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 melody. It's like it's yeah. There is some melancholy in there, but it's the, the, it has that like that nostalgic romance to it too. Yeah. So it's really hard to to hear this if you don't know the lyrics. And that's the tricky part. I mean, even in English, we have these pop songs too. Yeah. That like kind of like sound very happy, but it's like this lyrics are. Really I know, like sad. hey, like hey, yeah, I was like. <laughs> you know, well, it was about like a parent, like how, like not knowing how parents stay together. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and like Ed Sheeran made like the A Team, and that was like about some recovering drug addict that died. Really? Like, yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Or uh, pumped up kicks. Oh yeah. All that. Yeah, that was, like, that's a nice groove, and it's like it's all about like uh, school shootings. Like, oh jeez. Yeah. So I mean, it happens. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. But, but yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta love Tango, man. You gotta love Tango. <laughs> yes. Let us know uh, what you all think in in, uh, in the comments and uh, what your experiences were like again with the, your own maestros or teachers in tango. Um, and yeah, we'll be happy to get back to you. But uh, that was another episode of Left Foot, Right Foot. Thanks again for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Hey, thank you all so much for watching our videos. Make sure you click that notification bell so you can get all our updates. We greatly appreciate it. And it'd go a long way in helping us put out better content for all of you. Thank you.